<laughs> hey everyone, we're now going to be marching at 110. It's so incredibly exciting that we still have so many people arriving. We can see them a few blocks away, so we're going to give them a few minutes to get here. We're going to start marching at 110. If you can't hear me, please, or if you know someone who can't hear me. Everybody, um, I just want to say I went back over to the uh, road, and there are still people at Soldier Circle walking here. Oh, yeah. So we have a really huge crowd. Yes, and we see and value what our science, our environment, nature, and creation are not just written down by the hand of God, but are nurtured by all of us. And so we have to be a foundation of support for that. STEM education fosters free thinking and open inquiry that can engage any student to love STEM fields. When a student finds that love, finds that force that draws them to keep thinking, to keep asking questions, the evolution of the free thinker and future leader of tomorrow has begun. The evidence supports that schools that integrate STEM education into their curriculum at early grade levels have tremendous growth in learning across all subject areas. In order to provide teachers and students with STEM-enriched activities, lab experience and professional development, funding needs to be provided from all levels of government. I know that our lakes used to be on death's door, and it's science that saved those lakes. Let's be really clear. done here locally to improve our lives has not been done in isolation. That work was informed by work that was done at NOAA, at NASA, at the EPA, at the NSF, at the NIH, at every one of those amazing organizations that make science real and applied and useful to all of us in changing the course of our lives. There is no more important time to have a voice to defend the science that is done in those organizations because it comes home to roost right here in our lives, in our backyard. Every one of those organizations is critical to us solving the biggest societal problems we have. And we need your support to make sure that funding is not cut to those programs and organizations. This is absolutely critical to the next generation's prospects for success, for happy, healthy lives. Government agencies. And I have personally seen companies learn from the results of regulations about how to save money and make more profit while pr protecting the environment. So anybody who says, anybody, and you know who I'm talking about, who says that you can't balance those two things, just hasn't been on the front lines to see it happen. <laughs> Polling suggests that most Americans respect science and see it as a positive force in society. A two two 2015 Pew Research Center poll found that 79% of respondents say science has made life easier. 79% see the effects in health care, 61% in the quality of their food, and 62% in, in the environment. And even on vaccinations, one poll found that 79% of respondents believe scientists should play a role in creating policy, and 88% believe the benefits of vaccination outweigh the risk. Several years ago when I was county clerk, I was in one of my auto bureaus, and a person said, are you Dr. Jacobson? And, he, and the person stood up and said, 
I'm standing because of the work that was done through uh, Bu uh, Buffalo General, UB, and your father. So that is what science does in changing lives. Not, not just here, but all around the world. So um, I think what you're doing here is so very important. I, I look forward to working with you in my new role as a state senator. But I just wanted to let you know why, why I have seen personally how it has changed lives here and around, around the world. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be A long time ago, because of a manufacturing and economic history that fueled this city's rise, we compromised something, seriously compromised something, and it was called our environment. It was our lakes, it was our rivers, it was our land, and it was our air. The Environmental Protection Agency said back in 1970 that the Buffalo River was ecologically destroyed and biologically dead. They were pulling fish from the bottom of the Buffalo River that had tumors, frogs with ovaries, male frogs with ovaries, because of the toxicity the damage, the biological integrity of that waterway. There are leading figures here today that 30 years ago, Linda Schneekloff is here, Margaret Wooster is here. These are individuals, these are individuals that started a plan in a fledgling organization called the Friends of the Buffalo River. Their responsibility their responsibility was to clean up the river. They had to do a rap, and I'm not talking about music. It was a remedial action plan to clean up the destruction of that waterway. Since that time, with the help of the Environmental Protection Agency and the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, we have spent almost $100 million to remove 67,000 semi-truckloads of con contaminated sediment from the bottom of the Buffalo River. And now, today, because of that effort, you see new housing and new parks along Buffalo's waterfront, including the river, and the same Environmental Protection Agency officials are now saying, are now saying that the Buffalo River will be swimmable in the next two years, that the fish that are consumed there will be safe for human consumption in the next decade. Folks, my final message to you is, thank you for your vision. Thank you for your imagination. Thank you for your commitment to this issue and to this community and to our environment and the importance of science in informing elected officials of what our responsibility is, not only to our constituents today, but even more importantly, to all of those who will inherit this beautiful place tomorrow. Thank you for including us. speakers and to all of you who came out here today this is truly an impressive testament to Buffalo's commitment to making Buffalo a better place